When most people feel a driveline vibration, they automatically blame the drive shaft and think that balancing or replacing the drive shaft will solve their problem. This isn't necessarily the case. Before you waste your time and money balancing or buying a different drive shaft, you need to check the things that the drive shaft is connected to. If the transmission or differential is wobbling, the best drive shaft in the world isn't going to matter. In fact, it can make things worse. We're demonstrating this on a 2003 Mustang Cobra, which is extremely sensitive to driveline vibrations. I've been messing with this car for 15 years trying to get everything sorted out, and I finally nailed it down, and that's why I'm sharing this information with you. I can't stress this enough. A perfectly balanced drive shaft will vibrate if the joint angles are wrong or the things it's connected to are out of round. Only after you get the joint angles and component runout measurements within spec will a balanced drive shaft actually help you. Here's why. Without getting into the weeds on the physics behind universal joint angles, just know that the angles matter and the closer the joint operating angle is to zero, the better off you'll be. Now, some will say you don't want the joint angle to be actually zero, so the needle bearings distribute the grease as it rotates, but I'm not sure how relevant this is with today's technology. Regardless, you want the joint operating angles to be three degrees or less. Not only do you want the angles less than three degrees, but you want the front and rear joint angles to be opposite each other so they cancel each other out and the input and output velocities are the same. Practically speaking, the transmission and differential pinion will be parallel to each other. This can be a little tricky because we want these angles to be parallel under load. So if you have squishy rubber bushings, or God forbid, leaf springs, then your differential pinion is going to rotate up under acceleration. So, measuring the angles in your garage may mean the diff is pointed down and the angles are not equal. There's a lot of fudge factor here, but understand this. The softer the bushings, the more the pinion will move up under load, so the nose of the differential should always be slightly nose down relative to the transmission angle at rest. That exact amount depends upon the rear suspension bushings and everything else. If everything is rubber mounted, then maybe a couple of degrees nose down is good. But if everything is solidly mounted, then the differential shouldn't be moving and the angles can be parallel. To measure the front joint angle, use an angle finder on the transmission yoke. If you can't fit an angle finder on it, or it's not flat, you can just use a straight edge or square on the transmission case. Just find something that should be flat and make sense. Same goes for the rear. We used a square with our angle finder to measure the pinion angle. If the drive shaft is already off, just stick the angle finder right on the pinion flange. To find the joint operating angles, measure the drive shaft and either add or subtract that angle from the transmission and pinion angle, depending upon if the drive shaft is pointing uphill or downhill. Sketch out your measurements to make everything make sense and see if your angles are good or out of whack. The Spicer website has handy calculators to make sense of it all. If your joint angles check out, then you need to make sure that the drive shaft isn't attached to things that are sloppy or wobbly. Wiggle the drive shaft up and down. If there's any slop, consider replacing the tail shaft bushing. You can use a dial indicator to check the transmission tail shaft runout on the slip yoke surface. Any runout can indicate a problem with the shaft, the joints, or the slip yoke. Next, you need to remove the drive shaft, but before you do, mark how it's installed so you can put it back in the same position. With a dial indicator, measure the runout at the pinion flange surface not the flange outside diameter. The flange may have balancing holes and actually doesn't matter. The drive shaft centers on the pilot, so measure that. Here you can see our pinion flange pilot has about five thousandths of total radial runout at the yellow dot in the flange. Ford's limit is ten thousandths, so we're good, but we noted this for future reference. Then we set the dial indicator up to measure the flatness of the pinion flange. There's no spec for this, 
but it certainly matters in my book. We measured the orientation of the maximum figure with a blue paint dot on the flange surface. Driveline angles from a bird's eye view are also important, but they're not easy to measure. We used a laser pointer to get an idea of our top view angles. You can see the laser pointer shows the pinion flange is pointed slightly to the driver's side of the transmission output shaft. We use the laser pointer on the tail shaft to see it is pointed to the passenger side of the pinion shaft. Just like the angles in the side view, the top view angles should be equal and opposite of each other. You can adjust these angles with moving the transmission side to side on the trans mount and re-angling the differential or the rear axle. Look at all the things we did before balancing or replacing the drive shaft. All this stuff matters just as much, if not more, than the drive shaft itself. Hopefully, this will help save you time, money, and frustration while tracking down your driveline vibration issues and getting your driveline running as smooth as butter.